Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Specialist Performance Tester Certification. We are in chapter two talking about performance measurement fundamentals and moving to the next topic here that is 2.2, aggregating results from performance testing. As a part of our previous tutorials, we have understood what are the different matrices and measurements which you can make use of in different environments and also deciding on how to select the right set of matrices for your entire performance testing. Now here we will be talking about how to aggregate together. As you remember, one of the points we discussed in our previous tutorial that some of the matrices can only be from a point of parameter which must be combined together to finally derive an outcome. So you may have three or four matrices which are collecting different data or different inputs from the scenario. But to finally come up with the conclusion, you may have to concatenate the four matrices together to decide that what exactly is the output. Now that's where aggregation comes into picture that how to aggregate different matrices and derive the result of a performance testing. So the purpose of aggregating performance matrix is to, able, is to be able to understand and express them in a way that accurately conveys the total picture of the system performance. Now, it, this can be related to your general testing reports as well. For example, I have to test a particular module and for that particular module, I have created around 20 test cases. Now, of course, telling each of these test case outcome can be your matrix, like test one passed, test two failed, test three failed, test four passed, and so on. But to finally conclude the overall result on the module, you say that the pass percentage of this module is 70%, whereas 30% have failed and the defects had been logged for that. Now that's called as aggregated result of the overall execution for a particular module. And the same way here, that what exactly aggregating stands for. Now when performance matrices are viewed at only the detailed level, drawing the right conclusion may be difficult, especially for the business stakeholder who do not come from a technical background and probably not aware that what these matrices are all about. So you just can't ref reflect uh, you know, 20 or 30 graphs to them and just say this is the outcome of performance testing. No, you need to concatenate them, combine them, aggregate them and derive a conclusion that based on the analysis of all these matrices, we conclude that the design of this particular module is yet to be refined or refactored so that we can improve the response time. Now that's your outcome which you are producing or presenting to the business stakeholder. But of course, you had a lot of matrices to help you conclude that outcome to showcase, right? Now, for many stakeholders, the main concern is that the response time of a system, website, or other test object is within acceptable limits. I think even if you are not a performance tester or you're not even a tester, if I tell you, about an application, the first thing comes to your mind is it has to be responsive, okay? Or it has to be responsive for these many number of seconds and this is what you call it as performance. Now this has happened with me several times. When I go to newcomers to the, of the testers, I ask them, what do you think what performance is? They say that, is it about response time that how long does it take to respond for a click, right? Yes, so that's where we are talking about a typical example. For many stakeholders, response time plays a vital role and has to be accurately well within the given threshold. Now, once deeper understanding of the performance matrix has been achieved, the matrix can be aggregated. For what reasons? Have a look. Business and project stakeholders can see the big picture status of the system performance to showcase them what you exactly want to show them, not exactly what you did behind the screen to do that. For example, to a user, you don't show what hard work you have done, what architecture you have done, what web services you have associated, what APIs you have created, nothing, right? But the user feels, oh man, I just work on this website and I feel that this is the smoothest thing in the world, right? now but you would have done a lot of things behind the screen to do that. So we just show them a big picture that this is what exactly it is, but of course you have done a lot of things behind that. Second, performance trends can be identified. 
You can compare them between the ex different executions or after every single refactoring to see that whether each refactor has improved your performance or not. And the last one is performance matrix can be reported in an understandable way, right? Because not everyone is well versed with the performance testing concepts and they know that what exactly performance parameters or matrices are. So you put them together to be in a representable format to those who are not aware of what exactly performance is all about, right? So these are some of the common reasons why you aggregate the results from different matrices to showcase the performance testing outcome. Well, that was a short video talking about uh, the aggregating results from performance testing. That's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm here to assist you at any point of time. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.